dare we go with the acid flow? Of course we do. So if you read the code for read verify, you saw that it takes a attacker controlled file on this side and it reads it into a buffer and it reads however many bytes are specified right there. So this is going to read three bytes into S buffer and then it's going to go ahead and truncate that so that there's a null character and then it's going to pass it to A2I, which is a string to integer. And that gives you the number of deses. So graphically, that would look something like this. Just a little bit of a tech controlled string was read in from the file and subsequently converted to the number of deses. I should probably show that as a tech controlled right here, but whatever. That's not the main problem we're looking at. So continuing on, number of deses, if it's greater than zero, well, that's good because that's a signed integer and consequently could have had an attacker controlled negative value, which could have led to problems elsewhere. But if it's greater than zero, then it goes ahead and it does you know, size of this data structure time the number of deses. Now you haven't uh, learned about integer overflows yet and you'll learn about that in the next section, but uh, this right here is sketchy. Anyways, that's still not the core vulnerability. So an allocation occurs, this data is now uninitialized, make sure that it's actually you know, successfully allocated and not erroring out, and that's all good. Let's continue on. Now down here, the read verify is called once again on the attacker controlled file. And how much data is it reading in? Well, it's reading in an attacker controlled amount of data. So this should cause your spoity sense to tingle because you've got an attacker controlled amount of data being read from an attacker controlled file into a fixed size 1000 byte buffer. Well, that's not safe. That's a sweet potato case because any value greater than or equal to 77 will lead to a calculation here that is greater than hex 1000 bytes, which will be dutifully read in and overflowing the bounds of S buffer. So that would look something like this, boom, and then all sorts of other globals that are adjacent to the global S buffer will start getting caught on fire. One particularly dangerous global is this pointer right here. And now the attacker has an acid pointer pointing anywhere they want in memory. Because they now control the address, if they can cause a write to the pointer or dereference of this pointer, that can lead to an arbitrary write or an arbitrary read anywhere in memory. All right, so continuing on, S buffer just caught on fire. And as a side effect of that, down here, this des info caught on fire. That's that acid pointer because this overflow of the global overwrote the des info. So now that's a tech controlled pointer. Okay, and S buffer was a tech controlled data copied into temp, going through a acid loop. Sorry, sorry, a for loop with an acid exit condition. So that's never good. And then we take that temp and copy it into G string. So only four bytes. Okay, well, that's going to be passed to A to long. And now we've got an attacker controlled string converted into a long written to an attacker controlled pointer. And that, my friends, is a right what where? Fist bump. So what was the fix for this? Well, the RLS Riverloop security team joined the SDMS team on a conference call to discuss the vulnerability and provide context. SDMS team noted that the tool came from a DARPA program in 1998 when they wrote the tool to handle parsing of data. They do not actively maintain it and it was intended to work only on trusted data. Emphasis mine. Because of course in government systems you can always guarantee that you only ever process trusted data, right? Well, you know, they can be forgiven in some sense for not programming paranoid back in the heady days of 1998. The dot com bubble on the horizon, you know, they're just slapping together some code and, you know, hoping they can parse these image formats that, you know, the Air Force is using for whatever reason in the DARPA program. You know, you might imagine that these might be something like satellite data or something like that. Anyways, the interesting thing to me is that this notion of an Extract 75 tool, the way this typically goes is, you know, Air Force Research Lab, make some tool, they run around trying to get other people to use it. Uh, it gets incorporated into a untold and unknown number of programs by contractors or other government agencies. And consequently, we have no idea where it ends up getting used and they have no idea whether or not it was only ever operating on trusted data. So ultimately, there's no real way to know the consequence of this vulnerability. 
I would just note that, you know, Riverloop Security happened to be looking at this, you know, Air Force Research Lab thing because they themselves were doing some DARPA program that was, you know, focusing on helping secure code within the U.S. government.